Hello, my name is Manuela Vanegas Ferro and I am a PhD student in the biological design program at Arizona State University. My talk will be about an individual based model to simulate coffin leaf frost epidemics. Coffin leaf frost is a plant disease that has a global distribution and it has a high economic importance. It has devastated coffee production around the globe, but in particular between 2008 and 2013, it created a large production crisis in Latin America and the Caribbean. The disease is caused by the fungus Hemileia vastatrix, which grows within the leaf tissue and it depletes its resources until it forces the leaf to fall. The spores of this fungus are dispersed mainly through rain and wind to new leaves. Coffee leaf rust has both environmental and social drivers. On the one hand, weather conditions that are warmer and more humid, which are expected to be more common under climate change, are favorable conditions for the development of the disease. And on the other hand, factors of farm design and management affect the plant's variety, its nutrient deficiencies, and its production levels, which in turn affects its susceptibility to the disease. It is important to know that coffee production is dominated by smallholder farmers, which introduces some special economic constraints that affect the decisions on farm management. Coffee leaf rust modeling efforts are mostly aimed at providing short-term predicting capabilities, which have a high value because it enables institutions to issue accurate warnings whenever dangerous weather conditions are recorded. And this way, coffee farmers can introduce some preventative measures. However, there is little exploration of longer-term interventions, and it makes sense to think about how a farm can be better planned from the beginning, especially taking into account that coffee is a perennial crop and uh, it takes two to three years to start being productive. And therefore, once established, um, the less resource intensive interventions are usually just short term fixes that may or may not be able to cover for a flawed farm design. In particular, it is important to take into account the effect of the introduction and management of shade trees. First, introducing shade trees changes the microclimate at the individual coffee plant level, which has contrasting effects on coffee leaf rust development. Also, shade-grown coffee plants tend to invest less resources in fruit production, which may help maintain a nutritional balance and therefore let them better defend themselves from the disease. And finally, shade trees can block wind gusts, accumulate rain droplets, and physically interfere with uh, coffee leaf rust dispersal. Considering all this, the model spatial rust was developed to explore coffee farm spatial configurations and management strategies that one, maximizes sustained coffee yields, which is only attainable if coffee leaf rust is under control, and two, that minimizes cropping costs. So here is a conceptual description of the model. The farm is represented as a square grid, which is populated by shade trees and coffee plants. The proportion of shade trees and the spatial placement of these trees is decided at the beginning of the simulation. Then during the simulation, the first step is plant growth, which in the case of shade trees corresponds to the accumulation of shade. And in the case of coffee plants, corresponds to the accumulation of uh, leaf area and coffee production. And this growth is dependent on the shade that is produced by the neighboring shade trees. Then the next step is the coffee leaf rust germination and growth, which depends on the radiation and temperature, which in turn are affected by neighboring shade trees, and the coffee leaf rust dispersal, which depends on rain and wind conditions, and can be blocked by shade trees. Finally, there's a step for agricultural management where if scheduled, shade tree pruning and fungicide application help. The model was initially developed in NetLogo, but NetLogo has limited compatibility with distributed computing. And also this version was rather slow. In order to implement it in Julia, I used the package agents, which allows to create an agent-based model object and step three very easily. So this um, agent-based model object uh, had a grid space, which corresponds to the mentioned uh, farm grid. And uh, in this case, I created three agent types. Uh, one is for the coffee, one is for the shade, and one is for the rust. And the model is initialized with uh, shade and coffee agents. 
and a limited number of rust agents, and this epidemic is evolved through the stepping function, which is worth to note that it was easy to implement thanks to the multiple dispatch feature of Julia. Also, I would like to take the opportunity to note that the documentation provided by the agents package is the most complete I have come across, and it has been really helpful to have that guidance, and I want to thank its developers for that. So here are two examples of runs of the model. On the left-hand side, you can see a random special configuration for the shade trees. And on the right-hand side, you can see a configuration that creates four subplots within the coffee farm. And as you can see, there is an indication that the special configuration, in this case, the creation of these subplots, does have a, an effect on the spread of the disease. These are the results of a parameter sweep regarding the proportion of shade trees and the spatial configuration. On the x-axis is the time in days, and on the y-axis is the rust incidence as the proportion of coffee trees um, infected over the total. And uh, we can see that the development of the epidemic does respond to the change of these parameters. This means that, at least in this model, the design of the farm in terms of the number and the placement of shade trees can have an effect on the control of a potential coffee leaf rust epidemic. And it's also worth noting that this required running thousands of instances of this model, uh, which is only possible thanks to the distributed package, its PMAP function and uh, the ParamScan function of uh, agents package. So I developed this model as part of my dissertation. So there are several points that are still uh, pending work. Uh, first, I have to complete a parameter estimation through approximate Bayesian comp computation, which can take advantage of the distributed computing capabilities of Julia. Um, I also have to extend the model to explicitly consider economic costs and gains for the coffee farmer. Uh, to be able to better incorporate the uh, factor of economic constraints within the farm design and management decisions. And finally, I would like to broaden the spatial scale of the model to include more than one farm. Uh, currently, that is a challenge because, as you can see in the plot, the running time escalates exponentially, which is um, expected. But having a running time of 15 minutes for each simulation is just not viable. So I still have to work on the optimization of my functions. And with this, I want to thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to your questions.